city uh, is leading a project uh, right now. As I was uh, talking with uh, Mrs. Aja, we led the project last year on Maputo Protocol, and this project uh, built the capacity of 25 women in every department of Benin on Maputo Protocol concerning their rights and their participation in the sphere of decision according to politics. And this year we are moving to Niger to um, sensitize the women, women sorry, to know their rights and to bring the authority to ratify the Maputo Protocol and to bring women to intervene in political affairs. In the AGA um, Secretariat, we focus mainly on three or four things. Number one, we focus on promoting good governance and democracy, human rights, rule of law and constitutionalism, but also we focus on the engagement of youth and the empowerment of women. In addition, as part of a, a wider strategy of citizen engagement. So this is basically what we do. We bring the African Union closer to the African people, but also we come to the African citizens so we can listen to what they have in mind about the African Union and what, what ideas and, and thoughts that they could give us to improve the work of the African Union. So then the African uh, Governance Architecture Secretariat is basically the link between the African people and the African Union. That is what we usually do. And that is why we're here with you today. I want to focus on the role of young men and women, the, the, the role of youth in, uh, in, in being part of the development process as well as the governance process at the national, regional and continental level. And then I will veer a bit to touch base on the role of women because without the role of women we will not really be able to, you know, to build our, our countries and our continent and make Africa a better place. So let me begin by highlighting the need for a bigger role of youth uh, in the governance affairs. As you all know, Africa is the youngest continent in the world. The population of Africa is 1.2 billion citizens. But 65 to 70% of this number is below the age of 35. So the majority of the African population are youth, young men and women like you and me also. And as a result, we certainly need to focus on the youth, the African youth. Because if the African youth are neglected, if the, if the African youth are not given the, the space to be part of the governance process, then Africa is not really using its dividend which is the youth participation. And if we are neglecting the youth, that means we are neglecting the majority of the population. So therefore, if Benin wants to build itself as it is doing now, it needs to focus on the participation of its youth. That is similarly the case at the regional for other countries in this region and also for countries at the continental level. So that is why we go from country to country, talking to our governments to make sure that there are programs and activities for the engagement of youth in the governance affairs. And why we do that? Because simply, as I mentioned, number one, they are the majority, but number two, they are the assets, the real assets that we have in Africa. The gold, the diamond, the uranium, the oil that we have might end at some point. But what we really have, the real assets we have in Africa is our youth. And if we don't take care of it, if we don't engage them in the process, then there will be a lost asset and Africa will not benefit from it. That is why, unfortunately, we see many African youth leaving Africa, crossing the desert, dying in the Mediterranean, in the way to Europe. And when they reach Europe, if they leave, if they reach Europe alive, in many cases, they might not even have a future in Europe. They might be sent back, they might be put in jail, or they might be given very minimal jobs that might not even allow them to make any savings that will make them to support their families back home. So that is why the African Union is focusing on youth because the involvement of, of youth in the governance affairs is extremely important. And by involving youth, we need to make sure that the youth are educated, 
the youth are trained like this training now the youth are skilled the youth also are empowered to be part of the actual work not only by name but in fact practically participating in the executive as ministers in the parliament as parliamentarians but also wherever you are if you are a teacher if you are a doctor if you are a nurse if you are if you are an engineer then you have a responsibility from your work point of view to participate in this process because everything you do will contribute to the development of Benin and therefore it will contribute to the development of Africa. You have to be progressive in your approach because you are part of the society. You have to become a leader wherever you are. A leader as a doctor, as a, as a teacher, as a nurse, as a parliamentarian, as anything. You have to be a leader in your own way in order for you to contribute to building your societies, your communities, and then building the country where you are, and that will lead, later on lead to building the continent, Africa, that is prosperous, united, and peaceful. And I'm very happy to see so many women around the table uh, in this room here. And uh, this is absolutely what we are calling for. Women are not meant to be only in the kitchen. Women are not meant to only be at home raising kids, although that's a huge responsibility. Because raising children means raising new generations. But women also can contribute to lead at the governance uh, uh, affairs. And I'm saying that because if women could be trusted as wife, if a woman could be trusted as a mother, if the woman could be trusted as a sister, if a woman could be trusted as a friend, as a colleague, that means she could also be trusted as a judge, she could be trusted She could be trusted as a president, she could be trusted as a minister, she could be trusted as a teacher, she could be trusted as a leader of an organization like Gloria. So women certainly can do a lot to lead and to contribute to the development of the uh, communities, the societies, and the country, and of course, the continent as a whole. At the African Union, we have adopted a policy of, uh, of uh, gender parity. By 2023, that is next year, the African Union should be, the entire Union should be 50-50. By, by next year, which is not too far away, it's just a few months from, uh, we are in April, so I think about eight, only eight months left. So within eight months, the African Union is working very, very hard to hire female staff so that we can have 50% female staff and 50% male staff. Now at the level of the commission and the chair, we have achieved that. So out of the 10, we have five females and five males, and we intend to do that across the board. So we are also inviting our member states. If they cannot at least achieve the 50-50, they should at least make it a minimum of 30%. Meaning 30% of across the board, from the military to the police, to the judicial system, to the executive, to the parliament, should be women. And once we do that, life would be better. Why life would be better? Women, as mothers, they have a very kind heart, as we all know. A, a mother will never accept for her child to be hurt, for her child to be in pain. So if, you, if we have mothers in the executive as ministers or in the parliament, they will become the mothers of the nation. They will also care about the people that they are serving. I'm not saying... I'm not saying that men don't care. But naturally, women care more than men, which is a reality that we need to speak, up, to speak about it loud and, and, and clear. Yes. In addition to that, women tend to be, with all due respect to us as men, to be less corrupt than us. Unfortunately, with all the research and studies, men to be, tend to be easier corrupted than women. Because women, they are, tend to be uh, more keener and more, uh, you know, into serving the purpose and the mandate. I'm not trying to really discriminate between men and women, but I'm trying to say 
the time has come for us as men to accept the reality that we cannot fly with one wing. We need another wing to fly, and that wing is the women. <laughs> but empowering women is not only about giving them positions, it's not about giving them titles, it's in fact about educating them, giving them the chance to be educated, to be trained, to be skilled, so then when they assume any position, they will be able to deliver on that position effectively. We cannot really wait until tomorrow to build the future. We have to build the future today. And to build the future, we have to begin by safeguarding our own, our own mission as youth and to safeguard our own participation in the process as youth. But also we need to begin by respecting each other as male and female, by caring about each other as, as male and female. We should not look at each other only from a very small, narrow point of view. No, we need to really know, respect each other, tolerate each other, and, 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 and not only respect and tolerate, and tolerate each other, but also we need to share information among ourselves, build networks, and, and share the skills that we have learned. If I was privileged to learn something, when I come back to my community and society, I should try to share it with my other peers, my female friends and my male friends, so we can all be informed with the same skill and be educated and be, uh, and be skilled. And, and then we need to give back to the communities where we live. We need to give back to the societies where we live. Don't keep anything you have for yourself only, because you live in a society. So sharing is an African shared value. We need to share, because this is what is really make us as, as, as Africans. I, I, I've been living in the US for, for so many years, and I remember in the diaspora in, 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 uh, in, in America, whenever I see someone from Africa, anywhere in Africa, I immediately feel connected. I immediately want to have a tea or coffee or have a, a meal with this person. This person might be from a faraway country, but you know what? We are from one continent. And if one person is in trouble, I will rush to defend the person without knowing what is happening. Because this person is an African like me. That is the solidarity that we are trying to promote. Solidarity, tolerance, respect, but also in addition to that, we need to also promote leadership among ourselves. You have to be a leader where you are. You have to be a leader in any way you want, but at the end, please think about the people that you are part of and the country that you belong to and the continent that you are part of. Don't think about yourself, because thinking about yourself in a selfish way will never allow you to be part of the movement to build the societies and the communities and the countries where we are. My last message for you as the young men and women of Benin, that the country is really going well, progressing very well, but it can't reach the ultimate goal that the, the government has put unless you are part of this process. If you see anything that needs to be fixed, report it to the authority so it could be fixed and maintained. That is your responsibility as the young men and women of this country. If you see that you could remove something from the road and the road will be safer, do it. Don't wait for somebody else to do it because somebody else might not do it. That is your contribution to building this country. And by building Benin, you are automatically contributing to building Africa. Africa, the, the continent that we all love. Africa, the country, the, the continent that is need to be at some point more peaceful and more united. And it can't be peaceful and united without you as the young men and women of Africa. So please try to identify a role for yourself and play that role in a very effective way. And don't try to leave it for somebody else because that role was meant for you and not anybody else. I never felt that I was home, despite the fact that all of my neighbors were very respectful and very nice people. But I always wanted to come back. I always wanted to come back, and I came back finally. And when I came back, I felt like I made the, ra the right decision to come back. What I'm trying to say, Africa is the future. <coughs> Africa is the future. Believe me, it is the future. And if today you are not getting what you want, if you work hard, you will get it tomorrow. And 
Tomorrow when you get it, try to share it. Share it as experience so you can ensure continuity that more youth are getting where you are getting at all levels. And what I mean by that, let's try to build through that leadership, build a continuity of a generation of young men and women to be part of this participatory democracy and, and to be part of building the, the country and to build the continent. That way, we will ensure that the, Af the African continent, as a continent, is benefiting from its youth, men and women. I wish uh, to end by recognizing uh, Madame Gloria as a young leader. Uh, Madame Gloria, she is no longer a leader that belongs to Benin. She's an African leader. <laughs> and one of the good things that we have noticed as African Union, that she is creating a new generation of leadership. She is not keeping it to herself, but she's creating a new generation of leadership. And I also want to thank this gentleman who is here, this John. He's a friend and a colleague, but he's also a he for she. Yes. Because he is a member of an organization that is advocating uh, for the rights of women. And nowadays you can hardly find a man who is advocating for the rights of women. So he deserves to be recognized. Last but not least, I want, I, I, I want to once again thank you all for having us, uh, Hager and myself, uh, to be with you this morning. Uh, we wish you all the best of wishes with this training program and other training programs. And we hope to see you uh, soon in, uh, elsewhere in Africa or to see you in a high position here in Benin or in one of the African organizations. And don't say no, say amen because you amen. never know. Amen. Yes. With that, I end and I once again thank Gloria for bringing me to this beautiful city and we thank uh, our dear honorable guest for having us. And again, thank you and please keep up the good job. Thank you very much. Africa needs love, but we need to share our experience. We need to, to be together, to be leader. And that my last book is about women um, I dedicate that book for you. Uh, it's the women around water, that secret pond, they called the pond in my area here, for 20 year research. Oh. What is the powerful role of women for everything in our community? Kingdom, uh, traditional leaders, women have the power. When women hope in life, you have a good life. And I want to thank Madam also. And then, um, for all people here, we want to say thank to you, and I give you that. I dedicate that. Thank you.